Greetings, fellow traveler. Today, I would like to remind you to be aware of the ties that bind. See, as we navigate our life, we can associate ourselves with different ideas, beliefs, people, environments, what have you, that help affirm some of the choices that we've made. It's inevitable. However, the longer we associate ourselves with these time, with these ties, we become minded to a certain way of being, a certain way of thinking. And those ties that bind, most often than not, help us acquire blind spots. So the longer we don't pay attention to certain aspects, the longer we find ourselves subject to the repercussions of such blind spots. This is not to say that we have to have all the information, all the answers. This is not to say there's a right or wrong. It's simply about understanding. See, as we navigate our way through our life, we are taught many things. But to teach is simply a relaying of information. At its core, that's what it is. Information is relayed, and there is someone or something that receives the information, input, output. However, to truthfully learn something, we must experience said belief, said idea, said teachings. And only through that experience can we truthfully learn what that idea signifies for ourselves and for others. So as we are taught or we teach ourselves and accept these certain ties that bind, we do not owe loyalty to it. Meaning just because you have one idea doesn't mean that you have to hold on to that idea for the rest of your living existence. No, you always have choice. You can always unbind yourself from ideas. You can always do something differently. Now, does this mean that because you're choosing a different input that you will receive a different output? Of course. Sometimes it's what we expect and other times it's not. That's fine. But I want to remind you that you do not owe loyalty to an idea that does not benefit you in the way that you see fit. But only you can make that choice. Now, it doesn't matter what this concept is applied to. It's whatever you choose. But over time, you will see that the more you have blind loyalty to things that are outside of you, the more lost you may feel. Even if not lost, you may have a sense of home, but it will be false because inherently something within you will let you see that there is more to the ideas that you have accepted. Now, whether you want to accept what you see or what you hear, that's a choice. But the more you turn a deaf ear and a blind eye, the louder the message will come back to you to pay attention. Now, how that message comes to you, you don't get to choose. There's always something bigger than us. Whether you see that on a soul level, whether you see that on a human being level, there's always something bigger that the idea comes from, that we come from, what have you. It's the same basic principle. But the more you identify yourself with certain elements of your reality, the more you're allowing the tie that binds to tighten. So it's only through your choices. It's only through your fearlessness or through your courage that you can allow yourself that sense of freedom 
and inherently there's an aspect of us that seeks that freedom. Now you can be the greatest, whatever label you would tie the greatest of all time. You can be the greatest. You can be the GOAT. Cool. But that doesn't make you the GOAT at life. You could be the best seamstress. It doesn't inherently mean that you are a loving person. You could be the best athlete. It doesn't mean that you're knowledgeable on social issues. And from what I've seen in this reality, we take someone who's good at one thing and we treat that uh, performance or that expertise as a rite of passage to speak on other aspects of life. And we see it all day. Commercials, uh, movements. It's all the same. Get somebody who's popular, get an influencer. If they said people listen, it's a tale that's as old as time itself. And I'm not here to say it's our job to remove that from the world. No, it's the opposite. I'm here to remind you that the choices that you make are more important than choices that others make. Because only you can make the choices that would change the reality that you live in. It's not about saving the world. It's about saving yourself. That's it. You can have millions of people listening to everything you say, following everything you do, praise you in every aspect of life that you share. But what does that matter? It builds a larger prison. Point blank. But when you choose for yourself to live a life of a certain freedom that you design as be that you design and desire as being free, no one can take that away from you. Because it's something that they're not giving to you, you're giving to the world. You're living your life on your terms. You are making choices in a manner that not only suits you, but doesn't take away from others. And in my own opinion, I believe that's a beautiful thing. That is what life is. See, some believe that school is where you go to get smart. And I... School is where you go to get taught. Life is where you experience this reality to know what the lessons are. You cannot teach lessons. You can only curate experiences that allow the lesson, the lesson or the message to be received. It's very different. There's no lesson plan for this life. There are only varying degrees of experiencing different circumstances or situations or ideas. And through those experiences, you learn. Now, what you choose to learn, that comes down to what you're open to. An open mind is, is excellent. But an open heart is uncanny. You could take the most brilliant minds in the world. And they'll all disagree. But an open heart. Take the most open hearts in the world. And you will find a symbiotic relationship. You will find uh, many points where they agree. Because there's a certain understanding. Through that open heart, you don't need control. With an open mind, there are limits. There are limits. And I'm not I'm not here to say that there's something inherently bad with being intellectual. No. I'm simply here to remind you that the power of your choices can go way further and way deeper and create a reality that's 
richer than you could ever imagine. And in discovering that within yourself, you you lead by example in the most beautiful way possible. And you do so in a way that doesn't take away anything from anyone else. And it doesn't mean that others will be happy for you or cheer you on. Nah. You'll most likely irritate some people because the ties that bind that you have freed yourself from, they still hold near and dear. And it's not that they don't like that you've changed, but they're frustrated because if you don't share the same ties that bind, that what's used to control them can no longer be used to control you. And for what I've seen in my reality, the response that you receive is, how dare you? The response that I receive is, oh, you think you're better. Not at all. But something within them feels that way. It's a projection. And that's, I mean, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. But to make the change within yourself and be okay with your idea of freedom and not needing to control the outside world, not needing to control others, not needing to control your environment outside of you, but finding peace within, finding freedom within, finding love, grace within. It's a beautiful place to be. It's not always easy, but it's quite simple. And more importantly, it allows you to nourish the life that you see fit for yourself. And in doing that for yourself, maybe you can plant seeds for others to find their peace. Remove the ties that bind and allow yourself to be free. Until next time, be blessed. And please, don't forget to smile.